So how do you get out of a bad position? Uh, the first thing you need definitely is a plan. Uh, if you can avoid getting into a bad position, that's definitely better. But if you find yourself in one where you're surrounded by enemies, you need to think about what abilities you have, what engage abilities you have access to, what tools you have access to in terms of how you can kill enemies efficiently. So in this case, I noticed that my Corin Pandreo Sage has an alt. So let's use his alt. Torrential Roar. And what this will do is it freezes all the mages. Because it hits two of them and triggers the freeze. And he can tank a mage. I'm not worried about that. 47 damage with low speed. 32 res. He's not going to be hit for anything. So these are now completely removed from the equation. I also had Hortensia kill a thing. She does have special dance. Goddess dance. Uh, I could have made use of that, but I don't think that will be necessary in this position. Uh, so just by using a single ability, this position is super winnable now. Now all I have to do is just go through the motions and just kill everything. So we can use like Elwind. I barely don't have enough damage for lethal, so if I have a Leer attack something, and just reposition, it's like Worm Slayer. This is an unupgraded Worm Slayer. This, this thing is very useful to have on Alir for this exact reason. Just leave it on Alir for when Wyverns appear and you will have nothing to fear. All right, I just made that up and that's really stupid, but <laughs> it's true. It's stupid, but true. Big if true. All right, so now we can kill with Elwind or almost. Maybe we would get a bond support or a chain. Yeah, dual assist plus. All right, now it's dead. We got the dual assist, so it worked out. But this position definitely looked bad, but just by using a single engage ability, it's now very winnable. Not that it wasn't winnable, it's just that if you can find some engage ability to use to simplify the position, you should. Corrin is probably one of the best emblem rings for simplifying positions because of fire ice and her ability to freeze things so when you can attack an enemy or a group of enemies that are in like a plus shape you can just freeze them just by being popped so you can like hit something with like l thunder or thoron and just poke them and then freeze them at range you can use a torrential roar to freeze things and then an aoe freezes per foe hit so i recognize that even though there's a space between these it still hits the first three in a line and then everything around like that's adjacent, also gets frozen. So it hits this and then adjacent freezes this. So just knowing how some of the mechanics work will help you drastically. Uh, now all I have to do is just clean some of these up. So this guy's easily killed by her. Honestly, this Dire Thunder build is like S tier on uh, Citrine. She has consistently performed for me and has been one of my best units effortlessly and she needs nothing and also frees up an emblem ring. So. If you want to run that on her, it's pretty crazy. All right, let's see if <laughs> let's see if Timera makes me proud. Uh, maybe not. That's a covert in trees, so she's not hitting that. But I know who will hit that. <laughs> it's Citrine. <laughs> Citrine should be able to hit that. She's a mystic. She'll be fine. Hey, look at this. And she kills it before it counterattacks. It's so perfect. But as long as you can break down the enemy position into parts, and also you want to conserve emblem rings if you can. Now you want to use them when it makes sense to, so you don't want to just like waste them. But if you can get away with delaying using them, you usually should do that. All right, then we have Chloe diving something. This is why flyers are good. They can just go out and hit these targets over any terrain, it doesn't matter. They just fly right over it. Trees, fire, water, doesn't matter. They just go right over it. It's very useful to have at least a few flyers. All right, now all I have to do is just kill this guy. And now we're fine. Now having good units is part of the battle too. Like you have to know how to build units. You have to understand who is good and why. What units do, like which units perform in which roles. Most units, generally speaking, as a general rule of thumb, you want just damage. If a unit can deal damage and kill things, you want it. So if it can double consistently, if it has access to high decks or crit builds, if it has good durability and can counterattack, if it has some unique gimmick to deal high damage, 
that's what you want and that's all you should care about, to be honest. Alright, let's see. Just stab this. This is an under-leveled time era. But she'll she'll still be able to clean up this kill. I started running her late. You can tell by how much XP she just gained. She's underleveled. When you gain a ton of XP, it means you're underleveled for the map. Then we can kill this guy. So yeah, now this position's winnable. Corrin honestly is one of the strongest things. Uh, Lucina is also insanely strong. I would say those two are like tied for the the strongest emblem rings. Lucina allows so many nonsensical things with bonded shield you can literally solo maps or not solo but like five man maps you can like three to five man maps with lucina bonded shield and corin just allows you to just stall and delay enemies so he here's an example if i just attack this with l thunder this is another thing that you should use a lot this now just freezes both of them even if it misses even if it misses and it debuffs them it debuffs the target and freezes both of them and then you can dance this. I don't think he'll be able to get within range because those are too far away, but he might be able to. Just barely. Now he's, he's out of range. But if he was with, with, within range of other enemies, he can freeze two groups. So even after you use Torrential Roar, you don't necessarily have to use the uh, Dragon Vein, right? Or whatever vein you're using. You can use just a t an attack, right? So you can deal damage, set up a kill, put a debuff. So now that this thing is debuffed, if I attack it, I can kill it in a single hit. Um, now the other one will kill me, so I'll need to catch heal, but you get the idea. So yeah, that's it for this one. Just a quick video on how to break down a position and take stock of, or, or to take note of what you have in stock as far as like engage abilities. Now the more engage abilities you have access to, the better. Some aren't really super useful for breaking out so for example if you pop ike you're not going to go kill a bunch of things it's more used for like enemy phase and like tanking uh whereas if you pop erica you could probably get a kill with twin strike if you pop lucina that's more of an enemy phase tanking thing and then makaya is more of like a utility so it helps to know everything about your units and what they do uh, so for example a quad strike it's not going to kill this but i can attack this without getting counter hit now or if I can boost her damage by standing next to a Leer, I could kill this. So it's good to know little things like that. And then of course, the Goddess Dance allows you to refresh a bunch of units, including a Dancer. So that can be very useful to have. Uh, you have to look at things like Goddess Dance, like having four extra turns, like four extra unit turns. So if you set it up correctly, you get to refresh a lot of units. And that could be the difference between a bad position or like a losing or winning position so it definitely helps to know all of your abilities what they do where they're good but yeah that's it for this one definitely like and subscribe if you found this useful feel free to drop a comment and i'll see you next one